Let me show you how to multi-stream on Streamlabs to Twitch, Kick, YouTube, or wherever your little heart desires. I personally use Streamlabs in order to multi-stream, and this is what my setup looks like. I got my stream preview in the top right, I got my scenes, I got my sources, my audio mixer, and most importantly, I have my multi-stream chat so I can see messages from Twitch, Kick, YouTube, or wherever I happen to be multi-streaming at that time. And in order to accomplish this, I'm using Streamlabs Ultra, which I'll leave linked in the description down below so you can check it out for yourself. And I like using Using Streamlabs Ultra as opposed to just using an OBS plugin because it's a cloud-based solution, which just basically means it keeps everything super easy and simple, which I personally love, and it doesn't make it so you need to use more bandwidth or more hardware requirements in order to stream to more than one platform. Because if I'm using OBS Studio and I just download an OBS plugin that allows me to multi-stream, that means every time I want to add a different streaming destination, so let's say I'm streaming to Twitch and YouTube at the same time, as soon as I stream to both of those using that OBS plugin, it's going to be using way more my bandwidth and my hardware requirements, which honestly, my internet, it's not that awesome to begin with. So personally, Streamlabs Ultra is a great solution for me when it comes to multi-streaming because it's basically the same as streaming to one platform, but I could be streaming on three or four at the time. Now, obviously this comes with a cost, but I think it's quite reasonable. If you get the annual plan, it's only going to cost you $12.50 a month, which is literally two and a half kick subs. So for me personally, I think it's totally worth it. So if you want to continue, I'll leave a link in the description down below where you can follow along. So if we jump back into Streamlabs, we can set this all up. If you guys haven't already seen my video on how to stream with Streamlabs, I'll leave that in the top right corner. That'll be a lot more slower and in-depth on how to actually start a stream from scratch. But if you guys have streamed before, you have a general idea of how everything works, then you'll be good to go. But from here, we're gonna go to the bottom left corner after we already have our Streamlabs Ultra subscription. We're gonna go to the Settings tab. And then the very first thing we need to do is go to General. And if you're not logged in, make Make sure to log in with your account in the bottom left corner and you're going to want to make sure that the confirm stream title and game before going live is on so make sure that this is enabled and honestly when i was first doing this tutorial video i was logged in with my youtube account and i didn't see this option so if you don't see this option log in with your twitch account and you should be able to see this box so that might be a little roadblock that you might run into and that's how i fixed it but if you're freaking out because you're like oh man i don't want to stream on twitch that's totally fine i was logged in with my youtube channel before i did didn't see this option. The only thing that this is meaning is that if we click done and we hit go live, it's going to bring up this box that confirms that we can change settings. So if you hit go live and this box pops up for you, then you're good to go. You don't even have to worry about not being able to see this little button right here. But if it does start without showing you that little box, just log in with your Twitch account, make sure that this is enabled, and then you can log out and log in with your YouTube or whatever else. We really just want to make sure that this little box is going to pop up before you stream. So don't worry about it too much. Next, we're going to go to the multi-streaming tab on the side and just follow the simple directions. So step one, connect your streaming accounts in the stream settings. So this is where we're going to connect all the accounts that we want to multi-stream to. So I already have my burner Twitch account connected. I have a YouTube account connected and I want to add my kick account. So that way we can stream to all three. So in order to add our kick account to this list, since it's not automatically added, let's go over to our kick page. We're going to make sure that we're logged in. Once we're logged in, we're going to go to the top right. We'll go to creator dash. Dashboard. Then we're going to the left hand side where it says settings and then we're going to go to stream key. So now we're going to copy this stream URL. I'm going to click this little button next to it or you can just highlight it, right click and copy. Then we're going to go back to Streamlabs. We're going to click this add destination button at the very bottom. We're going to name this kick. Then we're gonna paste in the URL we just got. Let's go back to kick again. And now we're going to copy this stream key, but don't show the stream key to anybody. Otherwise they'll be able to stream from your kick account and we don't want that, right? So keep it private. We're gonna click the little copy button next to it. It's the little two squares. We're gonna go back to Streamlabs. I'm gonna paste in the stream key here. So we have our stream URL at the top. We have our stream key here. We're gonna click save. And now we have Twitch, YouTube, and kick all connected to our account. And if you didn't already connect your Twitch or YouTube or wherever you wanna connect, you'll just simply hit the connect button and follow the instructions. They're pretty simple, I promise. So now we have all of our streaming destinations that we wanna stream to. So that's fantastic, that's great, we're halfway there. If you haven't streamed on Streamlabs before, then it's basically the same thing as OBS Studio, if you're familiar. You go to your output settings, you'll put in your output settings here. And if you have no idea what to put for your output settings, I'll leave this article right here in the description down below. 
And basically, you'll just find out whatever encoder you have, and you'll just put in these settings there. This is for OBS Studio, so it's not exactly one-to-one, -one, but it's pretty much the same. So I'll just bring up my settings once again, so you guys can feel free to copy these. Or if you have a different encoder and you don't have NVIDIA NVEC, then you'll be able to use one of the other options, but it really doesn't matter too, too much as long as you follow this general setup. And another roadblock, if your stream is just not starting for whatever reason, try using a different encoder right here, because if you're using a wrong encoder, that could be the reason why your stream isn't starting or you got a black screen or whatever. So just try switching that out before you start ripping out all your beard here like me, because I got this patch right here. So we got our output settings right here. This is on advanced, by the way. So if you don't see all these settings, make sure to change it to advanced. Go to your audio tab real quick. Make sure you have your desktop audio set up correctly. This is just where your game volume is and basically what audio device you're using to hear all of your sounds. And then you have your microphone, which I have here. So just pick your microphone and you'll be able to have your game audio as well as your microphone. Video tab, base canvas resolution. That's whatever the size of your monitor is. I'm using a 1080p monitor. So I'm using 1080p resolution. The output resolution is what you want to stream at. So if you want to stream at 1080p, you're going to want to stream at the output scaled resolution of 1080p. For the downscale filter, I like using Lanscos. It's the best one that I know of. And then for common FPS value is 60 because I want to be streaming at 1080p, 60 frames per second. Makes sense, right? But another roadblock that you guys might come into contact with is if Kick is limiting your streams to 720p. And that's just because they're only doing that to people that have two viewers or less. So if you want to get past that 720p cap, you got to get more than two viewers. But just in case you guys were wondering, that's why. So those are basically all the important settings that you have to worry about. So once we're done with that, we're going to click done and we're going to go back to Streamlabs over here. And before we start multi-streaming, obviously you guys want to know how I set up this multi-chat, right? Some of you guys might be thinking, hmm, I'm just going to click this little arrow here and this is going to bring up whatever accounts are connected, right? So this is my Twitch chat, which is fine if you want to see like your channel points and all that sort of redemption stuff so you can have up both of these. But some of you guys won't even see this right now. And that's because you got to go over to this layout editor, which if you don't see that, you can click this little arrow and you'll see editor. You go to layout editor. So once you're under the layout editor, you can pick one of these presets here. I prefer using this one and you'll see an option that says website. So this is where we're going to paste in the browser source URL. If you guys are familiar with browser source URLs, because you've seen my other videos in my kick playlist in the top right corner, everything you need to know about streaming on kick is over there. But if you guys have no idea what I'm talking about, I'll very quickly show you it. So give me five seconds of your time. Basically, you'll be using a free tool called Botrix. I have so many videos already on my channel, how to set this up. So honestly, just go watch my video on how to set up a follower goal for your stream. It'll show you how to set up Botrix and make sure every single step is very concise and easy to set up. And I'll leave that video in the top right corner. So if you don't have Botrix set up, watch that specific video to set it all up. But as you can see, we have our Twitch account connected. We have our YouTube account connected and kick account connected. So these are all of the chats we're going to be able to see. Once we go over to the widgets tab, and then we're going to go over down to chat, and then we'll see the multi chat solution. So this will be for our Twitch account, our YouTube account and kick account, all of these in one chat box. So you can obviously hide bot messages, you can add emotes, you can make sure that messages disappear. If you'd like, you can hide commands, you can show which platform they're talking from. So if they're talking from Trovo, kick, YouTube, Twitch, you'll be able to enable that here. You can also change the pattern of what it looks like. I personally just like the default because I'm a simple guy who likes to wear simple shirts like this Pikachu shirt. It's honestly one of my favorite shirts ever. So if you like this and you like me and you want to learn more about streaming, you guys can drop a like on this video. And if you see this Pikachu shirt in person, it's probably me. So come say hi. But this is the multi-streaming chat. So I'm going to click copy and then we're going to go and paste this link over in Streamlabs. So I'm just going to paste this link here by double clicking and then control V. And that's going to paste that in the website slot. We're going to go to the top right corner, click save changes. So now this is our setup, right? We got our stream preview. We got all of our stuff here. And then we have our multi-stream chat here, right? If we want to test the multi-streaming chat, we're going to go to the accounts that we connected. So in this instance, I'm going to go to my Twitch account that I connected. We're over on my Twitch page. I'm just going to go test, test from Twitch, send it. Then we're going to go back to Streamlabs. Now you can see I got my Twitch message right here. Test, test from Twitch. Let's go to our connected kick account. So I'm over on my creator dashboard over on the kick account that I connected. I'll go test, test 
from Kick. Whoops, I can't spell. Sorry for that. <laughs> Click chat, send that message through. Now you can see test test from Kick. So we see these two right here. YouTube is a little bit more of a pain in the butt, and I'll explain why in just a second. But if we go to hit go live in the bottom right corner, make sure that this window pops up. Otherwise, that means that you have to go back to your settings and enable this. But like I said, remember, if you don't have your Twitch account connect, you might not see this box. So that could be a thing. Otherwise, reach out to Streamlabs chat. They're honestly super dope and very helpful. And if you guys are wondering how to get there, just go to Streamlabs and then click this little bottom right corner here and you can talk to an actual person. They're honestly super helpful if you guys have any questions whatsoever. But assuming you have this box right here, you can see all the different destinations that we want to stream to like Twitch, YouTube and Kick. So I'm just going to enable all of these here and then I'm going to hit the show advanced settings button at the bottom. And so this is where we set our titles and everything and descriptions for everything that we want to do for all of our different streaming destinations. But you can go and see the Twitch settings. You can change the Twitch category. So the game, your tags, you can also use a different title if you'd like. So we do test stream Twitch. If I can, oh my God, I can't spell, please. Just let me do this once for the tutorial. Just make me look smart. So we're gonna go down to YouTube. And this is where it gets a little complicated because if I wanna do a YouTube stream, I'm usually going to schedule it in advance. Like right now, if we wanted to, I'll show you how to do that. So I'm on my YouTube channel, right? And assuming you have live streaming capabilities, you can go to the top right and click create, click go live. And from here, we're gonna click schedule stream in the top right once again. You can click create new or reuse settings if you've done a stream before. I'm just gonna do create new. And so this is where you're gonna add your title. This is where you can add your description. Just make sure it looks everything how you want it to look, especially adding your thumbnail. Thumbnails are important when you're YouTube streaming. You gotta get them to click on your stream, right? Otherwise, what's the point? You can set your game title. You can do all the customization for that specific YouTube stream here. Click next. After I put one, I'll just put test YouTube. Horrible title, but whatever. We'll click next. Then you can change all the different things about your YouTube stream here. Click next again. And then I'm gonna do public, private, whatever. I'm just gonna do public and annoy my YouTube subscribers because why not, right? So we'll click done. And this is just gonna set this up. So we'll be good to go. Give it a second. So now we have our YouTube stream set up. Let's go back over to Streamlabs. So we're still under this go live category. If you try and click the event, it's not gonna show up because we need to refresh it by closing it and going back to go live. Now we can add kick and all these other ones again. Click show advanced. We're gonna go back. I'm gonna click the event. And now you can see we have our event set up on YouTube, which makes it 10 times easier in order to get that multi-stream going to YouTube. So I'm gonna click that. It's gonna automatically import the thumbnail that we didn't upload. So whoops, but you put your thumbnail there because it's automatically uploaded from the metadata that we copied over. And then you can change your latency to ultra low, which just means that it's going to give the least amount of delay between you and your viewers. So you always want that, right? You also have the option of using a different title and description here if you so choose to. But once you have all of your different settings set up to the way that you want it, we're gonna click confirm and go live. It's gonna start streaming to Twitch. It's gonna start streaming to YouTube. It's gonna start streaming to Kick. So now we're live. You can see we have our little end stream button in the bottom right, which means we are currently live. Once we started streaming, you can see that there's a multi-stream option under the built-in Streamlabs chat, but this will just show Twitch and YouTube because Kick is not integrated into Streamlabs yet. So we're just gonna leave that as is. But now you can see, I've already sent a message from the YouTube channel, but it's kind of delayed because YouTube chat's a little wonky, which is why if you're testing your YouTube chat while you're offline, chances are it's not gonna show up in this chat box. So that's a little roadblock fix for you there. Just gotta make sure you're live first. So we'll go back to YouTube. We're gonna go test, test, test YouTube. If I could spell Jesus, we're gonna go back. And it might take a little bit for the YouTube one to show up. There you go. It was a couple seconds. So YouTube chat's a little wonky, but we're streaming to YouTube. So let's check the other platforms. So we're gonna move on to our Twitch channel. We're currently streaming on Twitch right there. I'm gonna pause the stream. We're gonna go test, test, test from Twitch. And then we're gonna go back. Now you can see that was instantaneous, fantastic. So let's check over on Kick. So I actually just ran into an issue, but I was able to fix it. If for whatever reason, your Kick stream is not showing up here and it says you're offline, all I had to do was go back to our settings and go to stream key. All I did was reset it by clicking the little reset button. And then I copied the new stream key. I went back to Streamlabs. Then from here, I went to the settings and then I went to stream. I went to kick. I clicked the little pencil icon and I replaced this stream key with the new one that we just reset. I clicked save, done. And then I obviously had to end and restart the stream in order to make those changes. But once I started streaming again, you can now see that if we go to our stream over on kick that the stream is now live. So that ended up fixing that offline error that I had just got during this tutorial. So isn't that convenient? And if you wanna make any changes 
changes to your stream info, like if you're changing games, then you just go to each platform and click edit stream info. You can make your changes there. If you're not allowed to save this, then you can just change a new category, like doing this one, change that. And then now you can see you can click save. So that's a little workaround for you there. And you'll just be able to do that with all of your different ones. So obviously we did that with kick You can do that with your Twitch one by going to your creator dashboard in the top right for, and you'll just go down to stream manager. And then you'll be able to make adjustments to your stuff here by clicking this little pencil icon and you can adjust your stream info here. And then for YouTube, it's the same thing. You'll just go and click edit and you'll be able to edit your title and all that stuff. And then I also use Botrix as a multi-platform alert solution. So all of my alerts are running through Botrix. And very briefly, if you go to the profile tab, you'll be able to see all of your connected accounts here. So as long as you have all of your connected accounts, you can switch between them. So if you want to do adjust your kick alerts, you can click this little green settings icon, go to the alerts tab. And now since it says platform is kick, we're under our kick alert. So you can see we have all of our kick alerts here. But if we go to our profile and click on the green settings icon for Twitch, the platform is now Twitch and you can change your Twitch alerts here. And all you need to do is copy this widget URL here and you'll paste this into Streamlabs and you'll just add it as a new source and it'll be a browser source. We click add source. We'll just call this one Botrix alerts. And this one alert box source after we control V or copy this into this URL, this one alert box will handle all of our alerts. But honestly, it's a little bit more tricky and complicated to set up these alerts, like needing the Chrome extension for your browser, which is why I already have a dedicated video for your alerts, which is in my kick playlist. So after you know how to end your stream by going into Streamlabs, you'll just go to the bottom right corner where this little button will say end stream instead of go live. And then you click that to simply end your stream. But now you can go to my kick playlist and watch that alerts video to set up your multi-platform alerts and learn everything that you need to know about streaming. But my name's Cody and I'll see you in the next one.